Hey, this is a video for 4.4, Earth's Atmosphere. So go ahead and check out the overview and set up your guided notes. So before we start talking about the atmosphere, you got to know the composition of the atmosphere, which uh, elements make up the most of the atmosphere. For starters, the number one element is nitrogen by far, and that is 78%. The next one is oxygen, which is roughly around 21%. And then we have argon, which is just under 1%. Now, you will have to know these two, definitely. Uh, argon, I don't know how often it does show up in questions, but just if you got to commit it to memory, commit it to memory. Now, water is going to be very variable, and that is because water, uh, the hydrologic cycle is relatively fast. So there might be 4% of water if, you know, it's really, really, really humid. It might be 0 or, you know, 0.5% water in the atmosphere if it is dry. So this is highly variable, and we'll talk more about water composition in the atmosphere later on in the year. But you keep hearing about carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide, while it is so uh, so dangerous to have in the atmosphere because of its warming potential, the amount of carbon dioxide is under 0.04%, which is very, very, very low. But it does have such an impact because of the amount of uh, warming that it can that can occur. Now the layers of the atmosphere, this graph, you might see this graph again, you should really memorize this graph or learn how to figure it out. But this represents us at sea level. Um, this, is, this is altitude, this is temperature, so that would be cold, this would be hot, this is sea level, this is, you know, way up there is outer space. So when we're doing this, the first level is the troposphere and all weather, all the weather occurs there. Uh, it is the densest layer and it's also absorbing infrared radiation. Another word for another way of saying infrared radiation is heat. Uh, technically there's some, uh, there's some instances where weather will occur in the next layer, but for our purposes, all the weather that you know about is occurring in the troposphere. Now the stratosphere is the layer just above that. In between each layer, by the way, there is up here between the troposphere and the stratosphere is the tropopause. At the start of, at the end of the stratosphere is the stratopause and so on and so forth. But in the stratosphere, there is the ozone layer, which absorbs ultraviolet radiation, at least a majority of the ultraviolet radiation. Some of it does get through. Uh, the mesosphere, most of the meteors that we will encounter that hit the Earth will burn up in the mesosphere. And finally, the thermosphere is absorbing X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Uh, these charged gas particles are responsible for the aurora borealis or the northern lights. In the southern hemisphere, it's called the aurora australis or southern lights. Now let's pay attention to what's happening. As you increase in altitude in the troposphere, it is getting cooler and cooler and cooler. And that is because what is happening is there is less, uh, there's less gas particles to absorb and hold on to this infrared radiation. Now, as you increase in the stratosphere, the stratosphere is very cold. In fact, where planes are flying up here, uh, not quite to the, not to the ozone layer, but they're flying up here, you know, in this troposphere and, and some planes can go up into the stratosphere as well. Uh, but the temperatures will increase because uh, a lot of this infrared radiation is causing the particles to heat up. So that's what's happening there. Uh, as you go up into the mesosphere, there's fewer and fewer particles, so it is cooling as you increase in altitude. And finally, the reason it's heating up so much in the thermosphere is because of all these charged particles. Okay, so really, um, you should really be focusing on the temperature changes as you move up in altitude between the bottom two layers. The last layer is basically the same thing as outer space, and that's the exosphere. I really don't see exosphere showing up here, but it's many, many, many miles out. Uh, so we won't even like the exosphere. It basically it's 
the end of the atmosphere. Now, this was very short and sweet, but what I would like you to do is respond to this check for understanding. And finally, I want you to explain the temperature change as one moves through the stratosphere. I hope that this video was informative. I thank you for your attention, and I will see you soon. Thank you.